I think we, I think we can win with our squad, no matter what 11 the selectors come up with. I'm confident that that squad can have success in these conditions. I've said that from, from day one, uh, once we arrived in, in the UK. Um, but we need to play better than that. I've also said we have to be at our best to beat England in these conditions, there's no doubt about it. And in these four days, we weren't. Michael, how hard will it be for Mitchell Stark to back up the Lords after bowling in what seemed like a world of pain? Yeah, well, I think the positive is the fact that he was able to, to bowl in that second innings and still pick up a couple of wickets. He just walked out and batted and ran between the wickets fine. So I think there's obviously... Um, the concern is obviously how close the second test match is away. But again, the medical team and the selectors will assess Starkey uh, over the next few days and they'll make whatever they feel is the best decision for, um, for the team. Why do you think so many players had below par performances in this test? Uh, well, again, I think credit, uh, credit needs to go to England. I think they, they bowled really well to us. They stuck to their plans. They had the discipline to stick to their plans. The batters that got in went on and, and made us pay. You know, Joe Root went on and made 100. Um, yeah, that's about as, as simple as it is, to be honest. What, uh, what alarmed you most about the, your side's batting in this game, particularly that collapse of four for nine or, or whatever it was? Uh, well, we've got to be better. It's pretty simple. We've got to find a way to... Uh, to combat the way England are bowling to us, um, they got pretty set plans to each individual player. They bowled well. They bowled really well with the conditions they had. They were able to swing the ball, but they were able to put the ball in the in a consistent area to allow the benefit of of swing bowling. Uh, Michael, the sort of patience of England and the way to sort of setting up, building up pressure. Do you think your guys went a bit hard at it in the first day? Were they perhaps a little bit too anxious to make things happen in the first with the bat and the ball? Uh, definitely bowling. I think we've got two complete separate or different bowling attacks. I think especially our two lefties are a real attacking weapon. So, um, you know, that's the way they, they bowl. And we've got certain batters in our order that are real aggressive players as well. So, look, I don't want, I don't want us to change the way we play. I, I like each individual player backing themselves and, and playing the way we have done over the past few years, which has given us success. I certainly can't fold our preparation. I think we've trained exceptionally well and, and played the first two tour games really well. I think we just have to pay credit to England. I think we were outplayed in this first test match. The advantage and the positive for us is we're only four days away from the second test. I think that's a good thing for our team. I think all the boys now are a little bit like New Zealand in the losing to New Zealand in that one day in the World Cup gave us a bit of a kick up the backside and I'll probably see this game very similar. This gives us a bit of a kick up the backside and we look forward to this second test match. Michael, Michael, Yo. hi mate. Um, hi. You can still hear the fans out there. They're, they're celebrating as if they've won the Ashes. What would your message to them and to England be ahead of the, the next four tests? I think the fans have been great. I love the support that you get when you play in your own backyard. It's no different to playing in Australia. Uh, we have great support. I think the people of, of Wales and, and Cardiff and everybody that's come and supported the game has been fantastic. Um, that's what you expect when you're in, when you're in England. Uh, the Barmy Army were were nice and loud and, and vocal out there throughout the whole test match and I think that's part of an Ashes series and I think it's good for the game. Um, Michael, just that New Zealand game in the World Cup that you mentioned, what, can, what is it about how the team bounced back from that that you can sort of draw on now? Well, a completely different team but I think any time you get outplayed it makes you, see, you make, it makes you see and understand exactly what standard you have to get to to beat your opposition. Um, you know, we certainly haven't taken England lightly and knew they were going to come out and be tough to beat in these conditions. And now we've just had a real taste of that. So we need to find a way to improve. Uh, we've got four days to do that. And did uh, Mitchell's injury sort of affect, like, the way you were able to use him? Like, were there occasions when you would have liked to have bowled him longer? And Yeah, definitely. Uh, he didn't open the bowling in the second innings because of that. Um, uh, but he was still able to, like I say, do what was required. He took a couple of wickets in that second innings. Uh, mightn't have looked pretty, but he still he bowled good pace and, and got through. So um, credit to him to be able to walk back out there and still get the job done. Michael, just in regards to Shane, away from the selection point of view, he obviously cops a fair bit of criticism as his teammate, as his captain. How is he dealing with all of that? Yeah, look, I think Watto's doing what Watto does, working extremely hard to try and be successful. He's, he's a very hard worker. He wants to have success, uh, like the rest of us. I think it's the, 
the hardest part of this game. The longer you play, the more ups and downs you go through. And through the good times, you've got to enjoy it and try and ride that wave for as long as possible. Because you know the longer you play, there's the other side as well. And when things aren't going to plan, you've got to you know, stick to your process, work hard, cop a few smacks on the chin and, and keep backing your own ability. And I think that's exactly what Watto's doing. Um, he's working as hard as anybody. And uh, like I say, he's been a, a big part of the Australian cricket team in all three formats and, and has had a lot of success as well in all three formats. Michael, um, before the game, you talked about batting over here versus batting in Australia and how in Australia maybe once you get to 20 or 30 in given conditions you can relax and get into a rhythm. Mm. Clearly that wasn't something that any of the guys were able to do here in the, in the prevailing conditions. What can you do between now and Lords and other matches this series to make that adaptation? I think it's hunger, really. I think once you get a start, you know, the hardest part about batting is getting to 20 or 30. Once you get there, you've got to have that hunger inside. You don't want to go on and make a big score. Once you get to 50, turn it to 80. Once you get to 80, turn it to 100 and look to make a big 100. So, um, but that's the game as well. You know, you get a good ball, whether you're on zero or you're on 50, it can get you out. It's the hardest part about batting. So, again, when you're in form, cash in. When you're out of form, find a way to scratch your backside off to get yourself into form. Well, I think we, our shot selection wasn't as good as it needs to be. Uh, I think the fact that we all got starts, especially in our first innings, um, we need to have more discipline there. At least, you know, one, maybe two of those guys, um, or us, me in particular, we need to go on and make a big score. Michael, um, talking about on the bowling side of things, uh, you said about how Stark and Johnson are out and out attacking bowlers. Um, which serves you well in Australia with the conditions that are useful to them. But whereas in England, is it advantageous for you to have two such attacking bowlers? Or would you rather have one attacking bowler and, you know, a bunch of uh, steady bowlers? I mean, or does it go against your captaincy theory? Yeah, look, I think it's, it's the advantage we have with our squad. We have options. Um, you know, the su success both lefties had in, in West Indies... Um, showed they can play in, in the same team and have success. Uh, you know, I, I think it's about execution. Whether you're bowling aggressively, um, whether you're defending through a period of time, you have to be able to execute. You have to be able to hit that area. And the advantage of this game is there was a little bit of movement throughout the whole game. We just didn't execute as well as we needed to, and I think England really did. Watch every Ashes moment live. And this is like the days of Lillian Thompson. Buy your live pass at cricket.com.au slash subscribe.